there's a thing that's that's going on and you know in churches today especially among the independent baptists they're uh, they're they're straying from the right way which is soul winning which is uh going out house to house preaching the gospel winning people to christ preaching the message of believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved preaching the message of salvation by grace through faith preaching the message therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law Preaching the message, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin, for to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Preaching the message of therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Preaching the message of that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And they're straying from that. And they have these new methods of sowing. Let me tell you some of the people that are guilty of it. This, uh, this thing that's on TV, and I don't, I don't watch TV, I don't have a TV, but people told me about seeing this on TV, a program called The Way of the Masters. Who's ever heard of it? It's, it's put on by these Hollywood stars and, and people, and supposedly it's all about getting people saved and winning people to Christ. It's, you know what, I'm sorry, but it's not The Way of the Masters, it's The Way of the Bastards. Because anybody who's preaching work salvation is a bastard and not a son, according to the Bible. Now, The Way of the Masters is teaching this kind of soul winning where, and they consider this boldness to, to go to people and tell them what a piece of trash they are. Tell them what a wicked, filthy sinner they are. And that somehow, some imaginary thing called conviction is going to come over them and they're going to fall on their knees and get saved. Now, it's not true. It's a lie. And it's not what the Bible teaches. You see, many of these uh, preachers, and, and they believe that you have to repent of your sins in order to be saved. Like you have to be willing to turn away from a wicked life. Turn away from drinking. Turn away from smoking. Turn away from drugs. Turn away from fornication. The Bible does not say that anywhere as a prerequisite for salvation. It's if thou believest with all thine heart thou makest. And so salvation is by faith, not works. Salvation is by faith, not the works of the law or keeping God's laws by not sinning or willing to keep God's laws. Now, some of these preachers, you know, They've got this new method of soul winning, and, and uh, this is spreading like wildfire across America. I hear about it all the time, and churches cropping up. And, uh, you know, my grandma was going to a church that she liked, and all of a sudden they said, we're changing the soul winning. And they, they came out with the soul winning program. It was a completely <clears throat> false doctrine, and she ended up leaving the church, thank God. Thank God an 86-year-old woman had more sense than some people who would just continue to go there and just drink the Kool-Aid. And so she separated from that church because they changed the, the plan of salvation and changed the gospel. And they, they don't emphasize the good news of salvation. Now, my Bible says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to, the Jew, to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also the Greek. So what's the power of God to salvation? It's the gospel. What does the word gospel mean? Put your dictionary away. What does the Bible say the word gospel means? Well, in Luke chapter 4, Jesus Christ quotes Isaiah 61.1. In Isaiah 61.1, he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek. And in Luke chapter 4, Jesus said, He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. So what does gospel mean according to the Bible? Glad tidings. Good news. Right? The good news is what the gospel is all about. What's the power of salvation? The good news. Now, many, many of these preachers, they've missed the boat because they think the power of salvation is how wicked you are. And as long as you realize how wicked you are, that's going to make you get saved. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that the gospel is the power of God and salvation. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, according to 1 Corinthians 15, 1, that he died according to the scriptures and was buried, and three days later was raised from the dead according to the scriptures, and that we have salvation through the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, that's the gospel. That's the good news. But many of these, many of these uh, new soul winning methods involve, and this is what they involve, going through, and I'm just going to name it out and just tell you exactly what it is, so you can know exactly what I'm talking about. They say, we're, you need to go through the Ten Commandments with people and show people that they've broken every single one. <clears throat> now, can you imagine going to somebody's door and just <clears throat> pointing out all the sin in their life and, and, and doing this through all ten, ten of the commandments? Now, where's, where's my... Anybody have one of the invitations to our church? Andy, you got one? Anybody? Anyone, anyone? Thank you. Now, look at the back here. It has a... It says the Bible way to heaven, right on the back. And it has some verses explaining salvation, okay? Number one, admit you are a sinner. 
Admit you're a sinner. Now, that, that, you say, well, is that part of salvation? Yes, it is, because the Bible says in 1 John 1.10, you just memorize it, we say that we've not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Okay? And so you must admit that you're a sinner, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But you know what? You don't have to admit that you're a filthy, vile, wretched, wicked, disgusting, <laughs> filthy animal in the sight of God. But that's what these preachers are preaching. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I mean, this kind of preaching that says, you know, in order to be saved. And I had a pastor tell me he was kind of going into this whole repentance fad. You know, it's like a fad. It's catching on. It's like a tide. It's like a trend, you know. And so he's going into this repentance thing, uh, both feet uh, into it. And he said, you, in order to be saved, a person has to see themselves as a putrefying sinner in the eyes of God. Pu you know what pu putrefying just means like, Ugh, gross. Now look, where in the Bible does it say that? That you have to believe that you're disgusting in order to be saved. It just says you have to admit that you're a sinner. It says if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not us. Now, has every human being in the world broken all ten of God's commandments? Of the ten commandments. Not that those are the only commandments. But no, I don't think, I don't think that my children have ever committed adultery. That is one of the ten commandments, isn't it? My children never committed adultery. It says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Well, if you lust after a woman, you commit adultery with her. They haven't done that either. They're little kids. Okay? Uh, has every single person on the face of the earth taken God's name in vain? No. Okay? Has every single person in this world made a graven image? <laughs> or bowed down themselves to it to worship it? Either of those two things? Encompassed by the second commandment? No. Has every single person in this world had another God before Jesus Christ and Jehovah? No, not necessarily. What, name the false God that my kids grew up worshiping. Has every single person in this world broken God's commandment? Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy, which does not even apply to us today, according to Hebrews chapter 4? No. Couldn't even break that one if you tried. Okay? Do you see how silly this is? And, and, and the same pastor told me this. He said, you've got to spiritually undress them in order for them to be saved. You know, show them how wicked they are. Now look, you're not going to get very far. And, and remember, why am I talking about this? Because we're talking about boldness. But first I want to make sure that you don't walk out of the service and say, I'm going to be bold and, and go out and be an obnoxious jerk. And that's what many people are doing. And they go to somebody's door and they say, you know, and, and they go through the Ten Commandments. They say, uh, Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. You know, have you ever put anything in your life first before God? Now, is that what, is that what the commandment says? No. And then they get to grave an image. Have you ever uh, had an idol like a car that you put more important than God? Now, look, I don't know about you, but the Second Commandment never mentioned the word idolatry. It mentioned making a graven image and bowing down yourself and worshiping. Now, idolatry in the metaphorical sense would be covered in the Tenth Commandment, which is thou shalt not covet, because the Bible teaches that covetousness is idolatry when you worship money or cars or things above God. And so they'll go through this, have you ever taken God's name in vain? They'll just say, have you ever said a cuss word? Now look, is saying a cuss word, taking God's name in vain, a so-called cuss word, a four-letter word? That's not God's name. Last I checked, God's name was not a word for manure. Okay? And so, no, that's not taking God's name. God's name in vain is saying, oh my God, or Jesus Christ, and throwing God's name around in that way. But they'll say, have you ever cussed? And then they'll get to the fourth commandment. Have you ever not gone to church on Sunday? Which, again, it's not what it says. The Sabbath day Saturday, of course. And uh, Sabbath, Saturday, Sabado. Anybody speak Spanish? Uh, Honor thy father and mother. Did you ever disobey mom and dad? Did you ever steal? And I stood at the door while somebody did this soul winning method. And I was the silent partner. And, he, and there was a guy standing at the door. His wife was standing right behind him. And he said to this guy, Thou shalt not commit adultery. He said, have you, The Bible says, If you look on a woman to lust after her, you committed adultery with her. Have you ever lusted after another woman besides your wife? <laughs> now this guy was embarrassed. <laughs> now some people may not be as embarrassed by that, but this guy was. And he's standing there and he's like, uh, uh. And his wife's looking at him like, uh, uh. And he's like, uh. And, and the guy at the door was bugging, like, come on, you know you've done it. Come on, you know you have. And the guy's like, uh, that's stupid. And you know, why would somebody want to listen to you come to their door and tell them how wicked and evil they are? Now look, people 
later on, you know, they need to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hey, that's what church is for to come.